the use of hedgehog inhibitors really relies on understanding of how basal cell carcinoma uniquely grows. Basal cell carcinoma relies on something called the smoothen pathway, and it's essentially a protein receptor that sits on the extracellular surface. And when activated, it sends downstream signals to activate DNA transcription and continued cell turnover and growth. When we learned that this smoothen pathway was very important to BCC development and growth and possibly even subsequent metastasis, when we inhibit that pathway then, we can collapse the existing cancer growth, but also prevent further cancer growth from later appearing. It's a very unique feature to basal cell carcinoma, and there are other growth pathways that it depends on. But that pathway in particular is the one that we exploit when we talk about therapies like sinitigib and bismodigib. At the time of the discovery of the hedgehog inhibitors for basal cell carcinoma, this was a significant finding because basal cell carcinomas historically had no systemic therapies. We knew that about 90% of these tumors had mutations in patch and smoothen. That indicated a hedgehog inhibitor would have a high efficacy. And that's what we've seen. We have seen response rates as high as 50 to 60% in these patients. We've seen durations of response that are over two years in these patients. These patients previously had no clear options, no targeted therapy and no systemic therapy, whether it was chemotherapy or otherwise. Unfortunately, their main therapeutic options remained surgery and radiation and re-irradiation and surgery again. That led to significant morbidity, disfigurement, and also mortality. The hedgehog inhibitors were a panacea for our patients. They gave us great ability to control disease. And in certain subsets of patients, like those with Gorlin syndrome, that have multiple tens of basal cell carcinomas yearly with high risks, we saw decreased incidence of basal cell carcinomas, the ability to control disease, the ability to have less morbidity from therapeutic options. Unfortunately, the side effects that we see with these hedgehog inhibitors are wide and varying, and they are unlike any toxicities we've seen. The main toxicities you see are dyskesia, which is a loss of taste or a change in taste that leads to patients not enjoying eating and having significant weight loss. Again, there's also anorexia that you see with this drug. There is a significant alopecia or hair loss that is not reversible in the majority of patients that I've seen, even after stopping the drug. There are cardiac toxicities that you have to be aware of. The muscle cramping I hear from patients is significant. We don't have the ability to give a therapy that stops this muscle cramping well. What we have are anecdotal therapies like stretching before sleeping, keeping hydrated, exercising. Patients have had diarrhea also. They have had uh, peripheral edema seen with this. Nauseousness also comes with these drugs. And as you can see, that's a significant morbidity. For my patients, we discuss the dosing of this drug because it is a once a day dosing and pharmacokinetics do not allow you to decrease the dose of these drugs. You cannot dose them lower. You cannot dose them one day on, one day off. So historically, there have been some forays into on and off dosing, which would be two weeks on, one week off, a couple weeks on, a couple weeks off. And those are options for your patients that cannot tolerate continuous dosing. So for patients, I look at the benefits that they're getting I do think about drug holidays. We have extensive discussions about the toxicities. And I also ask them to go to the websites for patients receiving these two drugs. 
there is a lot of help and support there. Sinitinib and bismotinib are both considered first-line therapies for the management of locally advanced or metastatic basal cell carcinoma. The drugs are essentially interchangeable in terms of their side effect profile, as well as the outcomes that were seen on their pivotal trials. And because of some of the concerns about tolerability, especially for patients and quality of life, we are looking at other therapies investigationally to see if there are better systemic treatment options for BCC.